Hello back. Now we turn to the second part of our chapter, chapter 22. Now we are going to focus on inflation and how to measure the inflation rate. So we have finished the three point, first points of our outline. Now we are turning to the last two points in our outline. Why inflation is a problem? How do we measure the inflation? Let's start so with the definition of inflation and what is inflation. To measure the inflation rate in any country, we need a measure for the overall price level. The measure for the overall price level is the average of the different prices. So what is the price level? The price level is the average level of prices and the value of money. When the price level is rising, we have what is called inflation, vice versa. When the price level is falling, we have what is called what deflation. So we can say that a persistently rising price level is inflation, whereas a persistently falling price level is called what is called deflation. So now let's turn to our question, why inflation is a problem. If inflation is predicted and expected and low, it will not represent a major problem. But we can also observe that deflation is also a problem. Both a rise in the price level as well as a fall in the price level, if it was unexpected and high, actually both will represent a problem, inflation as well as deflation. So, unpredictable inflation or deflation is a problem because it, number one, redistributes income. So, for example, if we, here, if we have here the workers and the employers, of course, a high and rising inflation rate means redistribution of income from who to who, from workers to employers. Employers will not benefit from the rising inflation rate, whereas the workers will benefit from this rising inflation rate and their profits will increase. On the other side, workers have in most of the times fixed incomes, so the rise in the inflation will result in a lower real income for those workers. Vice versa in case of deflation, in case of deflation, employ employers will be harmed while workers will benefit. Number two, redistributes wealth. So for example, if we are talking about borrowers and lenders, if the inflation rate is rising, actually the borrower will benefit, whereas the lender will be harmed and vice versa in case of deflation. Number three, lowers real GDP and employment. Yes, although inflation rate at the beginning will result in a higher real GDP growth and employment, but as time passes, the economy will return back to its potential, so inflation would result in a lower real GDP and employment. On the other side, deflation means that investors will not have enough incentives to borrow so in this case investment rate will decline and as a result of course real GDP and employment will also decline finally number four diverts resources from production we can expect the factors of production we can expect the producers diverting their efforts and their time not for production to how to estimate inflation, to make estimations of inflation. So imagine, for example, a doctor who is spending more and more time who is trying to estimate the inflation rate and how can he face such inflation rate. At its inflation becomes hyperinflation. We mean by hyperinflation, a very high inflation rate of 50% or more. In this case, the money will lose its value more and more. Now, we turn to another question. How could we measure inflation rate in any country? To be able to measure the inflation rate, we need a measure for the overall price level. This measure of the overall price level is known as the price index. Inflation rate is measured using price indexes. Here we are going to focus on two main price indexes. Number one, consumer price index. CPI number two the GDP deflator. So let's start 
with the most commonly used price index all over the world, which is what CPI, Consumer Price Index. What is CPI? CPI measures the average of the prices paid by urban consumers for a fixed basket of consumer goods and services. So we are measuring the average of the prices of a fixed basket paid by the average urban consumer. Here it should be a fixed basket. Why? To be able to compare the change in the price level from one period to another, we should not change the components of the CPI basket. Here we have three steps for constructing the CPI. Number one, selecting the CPI basket. Number B, conducting a monthly price survey. Number C, calculating the CPI. So at first we should select the components to be included in the CPI basket, all goods and services to be included in CPI basket. Then we will try to survey the changes in prices, in these, the prices of these goods and services monthly. And finally, we can calculate the CPI to be used in calculating the inflation rate. So, in this figure, we are showing the CPI basket and its components in the United States in June 2017. Here we have the different components. Observe the large part represented by housing. Yes, housing represents about 42.6% of the monthly budget of an American consumer. So it has a large weight in calculating the CPI, then transportation, food and beverages, and so on and so forth. So how we are going to calculate the CPI using the fixed basket of goods and services? Number one, we will calculate or find the cost of the CPI basket at the base period prices. Number two, find the cost of CPI basket at current period prices. Number three, calculate the CPI for the current period. Example, in a simple economy, people consume only oranges and haircuts in 2017 and 2018 where 2017 is the pace period. The CPI basket, the fixed basket, includes 10 oranges and 5 haircuts. So now, in this table, we have the calculation of the CPI. We have two years, the pace period 2017 and the current period 2018. The CPI basket observe is fixed in both years 10 and 5 10 and 5 what about the prices the prices of course are different in two years just remember that we are here measuring the changes in prices okay so first of all we are going to calculate the cost of cpi basket in 2017 10 oranges times one costs ten dollars five haircuts times eight it costs $40. So all in all, the cost of CPI basket at base period prices equals $50. The same applies in 2018. Yes, the cost of oranges 10 times 2, $20. The cost of haircuts 5 times $50. So the cost of the whole CPI basket at current period prices is equal to $70. Now we can use the cost of CPI basket in both periods to calculate the CPI in the following way. The CPI is calculated as follows. CPI equals what? Cost of basket at current period prices divided by cost of basket at base period prices. Time is 100. So using the numbers for the simple example, CPI equals what? In 2018, yes, $70 divided by $50 time is 100 which is equal to 140. Remember that in the base period, we are dividing the cost of basket at current period prices, which is 2017, by the cost of fixed basket at base period prices, which is also 2017. 
So we can conclude that in this period, CPI is equal to 100. So in this case, the CPI is 40% higher in the current period than it was in the base period. Finally, we can measure the inflation rate using the following formula. The inflation rate is the percentage change in the, in the price level from one year to the next. Inflation rate formula is inflation rate equals what? CPI this year minus CPI last year divided by CPI last year of this fraction multiplied by 100 to get the percentage of inflation rate. So in the previous example, inflation rate in 2018 equals what? 140 minus 100 divided by 100 times or this fraction times 100 it is equal to what equal to 40 percent now in this figure we are showing the relationship between the price level and the inflation rate as you see in the above figure we have here the price level and the price level changes when the price level is rising rapidly fastly inflation rate is high and when price level is rising slowly inflation rate is low and when price level falls inflation rate is negative which indicates deflation however we cannot say that CPI is a perfect measure of the inflation rate CPI has some biases the CPI might overstate the true inflation rate for four reasons. Number one, new goods bias. CPI ignore that new goods are higher in price than old ones. Number two, quality change bias. CPI does not take into account that higher quality indicates higher prices. Number three, commodity substitution bias. CPI ignore that sometimes the consumers might from the highly expensive goods to the cheaper ones number four CPI also ignored that consumers might shift from the expensive outlets to cheaper outlets when prices are rising finally we turn to another price index which is GDP deflator GDP deflator include the prices of all goods and services that are counted in GDP which are C consumption I investment G government expenditures and finally X minus M net exports so GDP deflator equals what nominal GDP over real GDP times 100 then we can use the GDP deflator to measure inflation using the following formula inflation rate equals what GDP deflator this year minus GDP deflator last year divided by GDP deflator last year time is 100 it will give us the inflation rate measured using the GDP deflator thanks so much